Okay, so here we are um, with some more effects processing, but now we're gonna do something called the audio suite effects. Okay, so what we did before was we had uh, basically a track where we applied some insert effects. We applied an EQ, we applied a reverb, and we applied some distortion to a uh, human voice. Now, one thing about this is that whatever we put on this track is going to be affected by this. For example, let's listen to this bit right here, which I just placed onto the track. One, two, three, one, two, three. You hear those effects? Because I'm recording to a track. Okay. And let's add, here's, uh, well, actually, this is, let's see. I will place uh, this. This is actually a song by the Talking Heads called Burning Down the House. Um, this is what the song, oops. This is what the song sounds like. Uh. But when I put it on the track that has the insert effects, it sounds like this. hear that so insert effects are great because they're real time in other words you don't have to wait from the process however two things one it affects the entire track number two since the real time whenever you play it's using your processor power to process it in real time while you're playing if you want to see what I'm talking about, look at this. The system usage. This shows you how much your memory and your CPU is being used. So let's try this. Watch. Look at the memory. The CPU is not really getting taxed too much because this is a pretty fast computer. But you can imagine if you have multiple tracks with multiple inserts, it's going to get a little crazy. So here's what you can do. First, I'm going to mute the track. Now let's place some VOs on this new track. Okay. So say I want to put an EQ on this. And say uh, I don't want the EQ to be on this. Say I want reverb on this but not on this well this is what i could do using the grabber tool i'll just select it then rather than going to my insert column to select a plugin i go up to audio suite so let's see on this vo which has been selected i'm going to actually no I'm, i've changed my mind i'm going to add some reverb to that so there's this really good reverb called D-verb. So what I could do is I can hit the little play, the little speaker icon right here to hear what it sounds like. One, two, three, one, two, three. You hear those effects? Because I'm recording yeah. to So you can preview it. You can change it. You can change, woo, that was, that was a lot of it there. You can change it in real time. You can listen, go back and forth. By hitting bypass. One, two, three, one, two, three. You hear those effects? Hear that? And you can choose between like on it. a small, insert medium, and large. Track hall is affected by it, whether you like it. Hall, church, one, two, three, one, two, three. plate, which sounds very metallic. Rooms, ambient. Um, and then of course you've got, oops, you've got all your presets as well. And one more thing I should mention about the audio suite plugin that kind of gives you an advantage. Um, right here where it says use in playlist, see how it's grayed out? So if I render this, I've already set my parameters. I like what it sounds like. I hit render and watch. Nothing noticeable happened, but watch, I'll hit it again. Watch the clip list one more time. When it says use, when use in playlist is grayed out, that means it's not selected. That means it's creating 
a new file for me to use, but it's just putting in the clip list. I'm not using it yet. So if I actually want to render it and have it be in the track ready to go immediately, I have to click on it and then hit render and watch. Now, one, two, three, one, two, three. You hear those effects? So what's interesting is the Audio Suite plugins let you actually choose specific clips, not entire tracks, specific clips, render them, and you could just choose to render it and deal with it later, and it just saves it in your clip bin, or you can render it and use it right away where the clip is. Um, either way, it actually creates a new clip. So your original one is saved, and then the new one is, uh, is made uh, the new, uh, basically an affected copy is made. So you can choose between the original and the new one. Speaking of which, there's one more thing you should check out, and that is this. Uh, where did you go? Right here, where it says create individual files. Click on this, look, overwrite files. This is another thing that could be tricky. If you click on this and hit render, watch this. You cannot undo a destructive edit click on the non-destructive button if you would like to create new do audio files. So a destructive edit means that if I hit continue, it's going to overwrite the original audio file on the computer with this newly processed version. So my new my clean audio which I recorded this microphone is now going to exist only as a heavily affected reverb version. Um, that would be called a destructive edit, where you destroy the original and replace it with a new one. Um, so normally you want non-destructive, unless you're running out of hard drive space. Uh, you always want to be non-destructive because it's just going to create a copy. Watch, see, created a copy. And the copy is the newly affected version of that track, but I still have the old original as well. It's non-destructive, so keep that in mind. And then last but not least, this one is affected. One, two, three, one, two, three. And this one. That's good. Is not. Because it is a different clip on the track. So, quick summary. Audio suite plugins. You have to render them. And if you're going to render them, you have to uh, let me get the window for you again. You have to make sure that you say use in playlist if you want to hear it right away. But if you don't, it'll just, either way, it will create a copy, an affected copy of the original in your clip list. So you always have the original as well as a copy that's got the effect on it. It only affects individual clips. So it doesn't affect the entire track. So this one could have reverb. This one can have EQ. I could put another one clip on this track and give that a lot of delay. They can all have different effects. And on top of that, this is another advantage. Since you render it, it's rendered a new file onto your track. So it's not using processor power to process a real-time effect. It's already been processed beforehand. So if you've got a lot of tracks with a lot of inserts and you're just adding inserts and inserts and inserts and you play and you play a multi-track that's got a lot of insert uh, effects you're using a lot of processor power and you could actually get your computer to stutter a little bit if you use the audio suite plugins then you uh are it's going to pre-render your effects not using any additional processing power while you're playing which is really awesome um, in the end, it's up to you. Depends what you're doing. Most people like to have one track that is like an affected track, one fact track that's not affected, one track that's all reverb, one track that's not. And in that sense, inserts kind of make more sense than individually applying audio suite effects. But just so you know, there are two ways to apply effects, inserts and audio suite.